The modern game celebrates the highline and relentless Gagan press of the Klops and Gasparinis. There's another school of thought, less glamorous perhaps, but no less effective. A tactical hybrid where patience and structure meets aggression and disruption. In this save, we're going to be embracing this more obscure but increasingly potent approach. Three at the back, five at the back, however you want to call it, we're going to have more defenders than attackers. But what we're going to do is defend a little bit deeper and press with fury just as the opponents come into our half. It's a half-court press if you like basketball. It's certainly a philosophy that's been inspired by my research of a few select managers who are quietly disrupting the norm as they go around their jobs. The likes of Ivan Juric. With his hellishly compact Verona side, he orchestrated chaos not through a high line in Gagan Press, but through zonal ambushes in midfield and the wide areas. His teams didn't dominate possession, they dominated specific moments in the game. Michel de Zacharian drilled mid-table league un squads into cohesive units that sat deep, lured their opponents forward and then punished hesitation with brutal coordination as they sprung counter-attacks. Colombia's Nesta Lorenzo quietly crafted an unbeaten side through discipline low blocks and triggering flank players. All this did was press with intensity only when the trap was sprung. And finally, Fran Escribar. You've probably never heard of him, and he's proof that you don't need fame to be formidable. His 5-4-1 structures were masterclasses in containing and explode tactics. What unites them isn't shape, it's a philosophy, compactness, control, and calculated chaos. At Maribor and throughout this save, this will be our identity. A low block built on discipline, a mid-block press that activates like a switch, and above all, verticality with purpose, no wasted motion, and no hollow possession. We're going to use those previously mentioned managers as inspiration with their ideas and we're going to evolve it for Football Manager. Through data, we'll dissect our players, who presses best in transition zone, who takes the chances they're given and who breaks the line on the counter and how they break the line on the counter. Recruitment won't be about reputation, it'll be about fit to the team, fit to the system. Using data models, events maps, and out-of-possession profiles will build a squad that reflects our identity, not just in theory, but in action within the game. This isn't just a tactic, it's data. It's a philosophy, and it's a break from the norm on FM24. Welcome to the Data Rebuild series. From the outside, the tactic we're going to use, it resembles a conservative setup. A back five, a narrow midfield two, and three more advanced players positioned ahead of the ball. It may appear passive, but it is designed to sit deep and absorb pressure. But that assumption would be misread of its actual purpose. It's not a passive low block. We are designing a structured pressing system that denies space and encourages zone-based triggers to control and disrupt the opposition. This will be done in three main phases. Phase one of the tactic is a controlled invitation. The shape that we're playing encourages the opposition to progress the ball. We allow possession in their half and in the early build-up phases, the centre-backs and the full-backs are given a perceived freedom to advance. This is deliberate. Our block remains compact and vertically tight, with horizontal spacing designed to channel play centrally or into a predefined pressing zone. Phase two is the midfield compression and trigger activation. Once the opposition crosses into our half, the structure activates. The midfield players compress, collapsing any possible passing lanes to the opposition number 10s or pivot players within their system. The central midfielders will shift quickly to engage, while the deepest midfielder screens cutbacks and central switches. The wingbacks, rather than dropping too deep, will actually step forward to force the play inwards, closing down opposition wingers or fullbacks as they move up the pitch. This will push the ball away from the flanks where progression is typically easier and into the middle of the pitch. This inward funneling is critical. It's the setting the trap for where we win the ball back. Simultaneously to these movements of our defensive players, the three advanced players who have been loosely occupying centre-backs, shielding the pivot players or restricting full-back movement, begin to press from behind the ball, targeting backward passes or flat central passes into midfield. This dual pressure effect from front and back and lateral compression from midfield creates high value pressing traps. Phase three is isolation and collapse. The structure denies access to the width of the pitch and isolates the ball carrier. If the opponents attempt to recycle possession backwards or shift laterally under pressure, our pressing intensity increases. Instead of dropping off all the time the ball is in our half, the forwards and wing backs or wide midfielders if we're using them step up closing space and triggering a coordinated press. 
The goal is not simply to win the ball. It is to force turnovers in controlled zones, centrally in the pitch, ideally just inside our own half. Here is where we have the numerical superiority and counter-attacking across a number of possible lanes or channels is very easy. The key principles of this system are as follows. Compactness, no more than 20 to 25 metres between the defensive and midfield lines. That is crucial. A delayed pressing trigger. We only engage once the opponent enters our half or a specific zone that we've identified. Central midfield will be a key one. Directional pressing, funnel play inside using wing backs and a midfield body positioning, potentially opposition in structures to filter everybody into the position where we've got a numerical advantage. Front to back pressure, advanced players if needed press backwards into midfield zones once the trap is sprung. And the counter press zones, regain and transition quickly in a central corridor or wide block when spaces open up. So what's the point? It's all about a strategic objective. The pressing model we're setting up doesn't aim to dominate possession or dictate play through the ball movement. Instead, it controls the rhythm, it controls the territory, and it controls the amount of risk we're willing to give the opposition in our half. It reduces the opponent's time in these dangerous areas and compresses their decision-making windows, hopefully ideally leading to more mistakes. It exploits structural overcommitments when they attempt to force a penetration and then allows us to counter up the other end. It's not a defensive block to survive, it's a defensive mechanism to dominate key moments, control where the opponent plays, and then take control of it when they lose the ball. So going forward, this is how we are going to press. It's not a matter of how often and how hard and how high we press, it's pressing where in our own half. As we drop deeper, then we put the press on, and that is what is most important in this save. The system might change. It will always generally be a three at the back or five at the back system, but we might have two wingers. We might have two attacking midfielders. We might have two up front with one attacking midfielder. Generally, we'll have a defensive block of seven players and then an attacking block of three players. That might change if we feel like we need an extra man in central midfield, but generally, that is how we're going to be playing in this save up until the point that we feel like we've achieved enough, we've played with enough clubs, we've seen how far this can go. I don't know what the end point is of this save, it's just something different, something I want to try. Now it's time for a montage.
So with pre-season done, we can dive into the actual season. But before we get there, I've got a few highlights to show you of some games. But before we get into them, a quick clarification. In terms of staff, we have delegated all the responsibilities to all of the staff except for transfers so scouting will be done by our scouting team the assistant manager will be taking control of training all the under 18s under 21s we don't have them we've got an under 19s team the under 19s team will be run by the under 19s manager they will be in control of all the training the only change we're going to be doing is when we need to develop someone into a new position we'll take control of that person's positional development training and then run that with us in charge of it just so that the ai doesn't keep changing it back and that then leads me on to our squad depth now we're set on our system it's going to be a five at the back two holding midfielders and then either two attacking midfielders an attacking midfielder or an, with an inside forward with one striker up front and that leaves us looking like this and as you can see we have a problem um we have four defenders four center backs for three center back positions that's not really enough for rotation uh, we have two holding midfielders for two holding midfield spots that's not enough for rotation either we have two right wing backs three left wing backs of which team chuck who uh, i'll quickly flag up his profile for you is being retrained as a left wing back he's more of an attacking midfield right but can actually play i think has the attributes to play wing back pretty well so we're training him up to play there and yeah going forward upwards um we're heavily reliant on a loan striker that we do not have an option to sign permanently at the end of the loan and i think fc mets are gonna want him back because he's doing very very well for us and he's probably too good for slovenia um and then behind him is quite a lot of old people uh jan repas josip ilicic both old marisis barisic at the right hand side who can play in behind the midfield as well or in behind the striker is old as well um, and kumarami is a youngster who we're gonna have to maybe put a lot of faith in to see how we go uh yeah so when we get to the january transfer window obviously the first transfer window was disabled when we get there we're going to be prioritizing center midfield and center back and we'll be using data to find that player if that wasn't obvious in the little montage before the competitive games of the season started with the european qualifiers for the europa conference league and we welcomed from bosnia mostar and to be honest they didn't put much of a fight up in slovenia a 3-0 win with some lovely goals scored along the way that one was an absolute beauty finished by tete uh, to make it 3-0 then we picked up on a loose pass and it was well finished by repas to make it 3-0 a very comfortable performance in the first leg which set us up nicely for the second leg and uh, that one went to plan as expected as well we didn't actually get as many goals but we played some good football a wonderful finish from Andre Souza our left back was absolutely superb he then got the assist for the second goal clipping it to the back post and it was headed home by ex Liverpool player Ojo uh, then it was the team from Bosnia's chance to get a goal they lovely ball over the top great finish past Jug to make it 2-1 on the day they then equalized to make it 2-2 and I would say make it nervous but we had that 3-0 lead from the first leg so it was never really in danger and just to make sure it wasn't in danger we then went and got another goal down the other end Ojo with a great finish again showing his class of why he used to play for Liverpool and left wing back Andre Souza scored from the spot to wrap up a 4-2 win next up was our first game in the league and uh, we're taking on cooper i think it was they went one nil up with a really good finish at the back post really well played we did get back into the game with this one a lovely bit of play down the wing side ball across and tete fired it in at the far post uh, a penalty from repas made a 2-1 to us but they weren't done there they did come up with an equalizer in what was a relatively even game actually a very good finish at the far post or into the far post and uh, yeah 2-2 we had the better of it but they did do very well in terms of keeping the ball next up we went to tbilisi in georgia to go and face off against dynamo tbilisi who scored an absolute banger to make it 1-1 at uh, 1-0 sorry and then we made it 1-1 with a header at the back post from a free kick uh, but disaster struck when andre Souza made a tackle and hurt himself he was out for four weeks um, and it was such a bad injury they had to send on all four physios to just stand around him and not do very much while he was very clearly in agony so yes that was one of the most disappointing things of the matches we probably should have won the game as well but we did go into the second leg a bit later on but before that second leg we took on bravo who 
was a weird game. We absolutely dominated them. We come away with this with a 1-0 win, but we've got the extent or the key highlights running behind my voiceover here. And as you can see as you watch them, we absolutely battered them. But something was fascinating about this game. It wasn't the fact that this was given as a penalty when he very clearly got the ball and that is what gave us the win. It was the fact that our goalkeeper gets man of the match. And as you watch these highlights, just count how many of them involve our goalkeeper making a save. It was a lovely penalty to put us 1-0 up, but their goalkeeper was very busy making save after save after save, but ultimately our goalkeeper got man of the match. But uh, yeah, superb players all around, and it was actually a good example of some of the football that we're trying to instill here at NK Maribor and throughout this save, keeping the ball, moving it around, and then springing attacks when there's a weakness that's shown. And this highlight here identifies that brilliantly. We keep the ball, recycling it from the right all the way through the back. You can see here, we move the ball around into the libero. There's nowhere to go, so we keep the possession patiently probing and building seeing what we can do and you can see we're just keeping the ball nicely moving it across laterally across the midfield from the right hand side over to the left which obviously is reversed in this this is now our right hand wing into the middle lovely little football waiting for that opportunity and forcing the goalkeeper to make a really really good save so the way I want the team to play is being implemented in the match engine which is lovely to see and how we didn't score this breakaway I will never ever know no, but it was a good save from the goalkeeper again. But as I said, zero highlights that involved our goalkeeper, but yet he got man of the match. And that basically sums up the start of the season and will be the end of episode one because that takes us to the end of August. We'll be back for the month of September where we'll have the second leg against Tbilisi, which is on a knife edge at 1-1 and plenty of Slovenian Premier League action. So I hope you've enjoyed this first video. We'll be back with the second one hopefully very soon. These take a little bit longer to edit. I'm trying something a little bit different and don't you worry. When we get to the transfer window, we'll be doing it live utilizing the data and finding the players that we need. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.